I don't think I think it goes without saying that everybody knows Columbus is growing and, and so are we as a Metro Parks. And it's somewhere just like here that we're thinking, where are we going to be in the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Here we'll have rock climbing, rappelling, kayaking, yoga on paddle boards. Who would have ever thought that? So I get asked a lot, how many parks is the right amount for Central Ohio? And I, I don't know the right answer. We have 19 parks today with over 27,000 acres. It'd be short-sighted to say that 20 is the right number, 25 is the right number. I think we have to be opportunistic like we've been since 1947. When the right piece of land, the right market conditions, and the support from the community are right, we're going to go after that piece of land. I think that in 25 years, I think the human race is going to look like a lot different. And I think we're going to interact with each other in a different way. And I think we're going to uh, consider art and public art in a very different way. So in 25 years, I think that um, the way we interact with public art will be one of immediate understanding, of uh, augmented understanding, of, of conceptual understanding. And I'd like to think that um, the art itself will change to address the way we've evolved as a society. The truth is art and artists are often um, cited as being ahead of their time. But the truth is they're of their time and everyone else is just a little bit behind. Um, I think it's interesting that you all chose this particular spot. It is, of course, the iconic grid of the Wexner Center. Um, but what some people may not realize is that Peter Eisenman designed this really as something of a metaphor for something under construction. It, it looks like scaffolding, right? But the fact is it was meant to suggest that art, and of course contemporary art, the art of the moment, is always evolving. We can't necessarily predict what is going to happen. 20 years out, because of how fast technology changes, it's hard to say what our exact exhibits are going to be inside this building on the floor. But one thing I can say is COSI is extending far beyond the walls of this building. We're talking about being on-site, off-site, and online. And one of the cool off-site things we're doing is we're going to be launching a science festival. So think of the Columbus COSI Science Festival. And what a science festival is in the context of what we're thinking about doing is really developing a multi-day experience where people can be absorbed, included, surrounded around all things science. So it's not just about being right around our building, which we definitely will have some great programmatic stuff and a capstone experience on the east and west sides of COSI, but we will be in the neighborhoods. We will be in community centers. We will be in after school spaces. We will be in churches, synagogues. We're going to be where people live, learn, and lounge. So remember, this is Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's house, who was all about social justice. Artists have always been in the forefront, and art has always been in the forefront. So for example, today we have a Trayvon Martin piece talking about social justice and all of the things that have been going on around the lack of social justice for African Americans most recently. Keep in mind that we sit under the gaze of Dr. Martin Luther King, and people expect the King Arts Complex to address those issues, and we will always do it. I want to see a new kind of music venue come out. I want to see a parking garage converted into a music venue, and the top floor is used for huge performances. But I want them to build the building so that it can actually shake and move to the beat of music. I think they could figure it out. We've got some incredible uh, architects in Columbus. We have some amazing designers. I think they could figure out a way to make a, a building kind of pulse to music. Brent, are you ready to do this? Yeah. Come on up. Right. Welcome all the way from the back of the room. Yeah, so. And I have prayed and prayed and prayed, but my confidence has decayed and decayed and decayed. As I look at history and even society, society today, I'm afraid of what has been... In the next 25 years, someone's got to sprout up out of here, whether it's someone has to. And um, Columbus gets a lot of influences from bigger cities because it's, it's, the sm it's kind of like a small, big city. So with it getting so much influence, someone's going to combine the influences they take and create their own style. And the starting point is going to be right here in Columbus. On a musical standpoint, there's like 21 pilots we have, which is huge because they, you know, they just had their uh, tour de Columbus. I think that's what it was called. Um, but 
as far as hip hop goes, there isn't, Columbus has not had a huge superstar yet. And we've seen them from Chicago, New York. Columbus has, I think it has a lot of potential over the next 25 years to be, to grow to be almost like, I would say almost like a Chicago's little brother. If Columbus can elevate itself to be, you know, that city, then I think more things will sprout up.